What's up, Liron here, and today I want to show you how I painted the Z Master. What's up, Liron here? Thank you for joining me in another video. So, some of you have probably seen this uh, one of my favorite watercolor painters, Joseph Zbukovic, from which I learned uh, a lot. Uh, and today, in this video, I want to show you some of the painting process. In fact, I'm going to show you the entire painting process, but some of it is going to be more sped up because we're going to focus on one part, and that is the initial wash. So, uh, as you know, I have this very specific approach when it comes to portraits. Um, that I usually do and that is I focus mainly on the values and I kind of let loose with the colors and I find that this is the most enjoyable way for me to do this most of the time. Uh, I just find realistic colors to be very boring at times when it comes uh, to portraits. With landscapes, stuff of that nature, I have no problem. Uh, but with portraits, I find that I like to mix up some colors and make it a little more interesting. So what I wanted to show you in this video is how I do exactly that, how my thought process works, kind of similar to the video of how I choose my colors. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I structured face in the first wash um, and how I incorporate the color element into it, how I incorporate the value element into it, um, and hopefully that'll uh, give you a better idea of how to do it yourself if this is something you wanna try. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting with the first wash as always. Now the left side here uh, is more lit, more uh, sunlight, natural light in this example is hitting uh, Joseph's face. So I'm using warmer colors. This is my default. Uh, I may uh, try something different once in a while, but uh, at the most basic level, I tend to uh, go for warm colors where it's sunlit. And then the more it turns from uh, light to dark, I'll add a bit more red and then I'll add a bit more blue. Uh, you have to understand one important thing is that every color has its own natural uh, value range. So some colors have extreme value ranges that you can get from... Uh, all colors can be light if you just add enough water, uh, but not all colors can achieve great uh, darkness. Now, for example, on the top corner of my palette, you can see the carbazole violet. That one can get to very, very dark values um, just in its own. Uh, and my phthalo blue also can get very dark, which is why I love using it. It gives me uh, more freedom than compared to, for example, French ultramarine uh, that, that you have to really pick up a lot of in order to get that same uh, value. So now I'm starting to get a bit more, uh, to add a bit more phthalo blue to where it darkens. Now this is still uh, an underwash, even though I am trying to achieve some variation in value. I do treat this as an underwash to establish mostly temperature and the shape of the face, but very gently, um, you know, I can't get each and every detail in. I guess it's just because I need practice. <laughs> if I was a little more, uh, more, uh, uh, let's say, uh, experienced, I may have been able to uh, do these kinds of things uh, a little better when it comes to, uh, you know, indicating everything on the, on the f very first wash. So now you see I'm working around that uh, lighter area. What I like to do sometimes is put the very darks n around to a more well-lit area uh, and then I'll just uh, add some water to the brush and use a very wet wash to connect the area while it's still wet and that way I allow the uh, dark paint to gently move into the lighter area but not too aggressively. Um, so yeah. Now I will, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but sometimes if an area is a bit too complex, like an area for the eye or something like this, I may just fill it up with a mid value and then deal with it later on uh, and just make sure I avoid the highlights because that's the one thing you don't want to lose. Uh, so, so I'm not sure if it happens in this portrait, but it is something that happens uh, a lot. So now you see me working around uh, his right eye, which gave me a lot of trouble. The eyes, here you see I came back with some light uh, value and then then it keeps its integrity it's not getting too dark of course paint does mix a little bit but but there is still some control um, now I'm very uh, I've been <laughs> greatly challenged by his right eye that's to our left that was the hardest part of the painting uh, I find that the eye that's farther away from us uh, pr provides the most structural challenge let's say <laughs> because it, it it's such a complex construction 
uh, and there are so many subtle shapes there and then there's some highlights you want to preserve in the eye from time to time uh, so it's just a complex uh, thing to deal with now I'm very aware of this edge um, and because it's going to be much darker I did allow myself to take a small rest there but I do want to make sure I work rather fast to fill in the gaps on the right as well uh, so yeah, so now this uh, this eye I didn't want to deal with too much. I simply cover it up and and avoid the highlight because I felt like the right edge is getting too dry and that's the danger zone where uh, if it dries completely you will get a patchy initial wash. So you see I covered all of the eye without paying too much attention to the details. As long as I didn't lose my highlight, I'm good. Now uh, a mistake that I still make very uh, very frequently is I still don't go dark enough on the first wash and I end up needing to add more glazes. Now that's fine generally speaking uh, but if I get to a point where after the second glaze it's still not dark enough I know I messed up uh, because you should be able to within two layers get to the lightest to the darkest values necessary now of course this is very arbitrary you should you know there is no should really but for me I find that beyond that point the painting becomes a little overworked and that's something I want to avoid okay so from my own personal experience here it's already dried so and that's fine because it's gonna be darker and lighter there's gonna be some highlights there too um, but from my experience at least that's a good general guideline. The way I approach this is the first wash I establish as much as possible, the second wash I push the darks that need further darkening, uh, like here the, the ear itself is all uh, throughout the ear it's dark so I just covered it up. Um, ears also tend to be a little more red so I added a bit more red there. Um, in any case, so the first wash just cover everything up, avoid the highlights, try and establish as much as possible, second wash darken everything that needs darkening and, and that's where you have to be really brave and it's a challenging wash, the second wash. Uh, and the third wash for me is just for detail. So uh, if it's a landscape or a cityscape, I'll add just the small final touches of dry brush, some rigor brush work. Um, but nothing beyond that is necessary if you did a good job with the first few. Uh, now uh, about this portrait in particular, his mouth area has some very interesting characteristics it's almost as if the edges of his lips go downward and that's something you don't see very often and it, it kind of connects to the chin and you will see me that it's just the area I worked on just this second you'll see me darken this area later on to convey the shadow there uh, it, it's not very common uh, but this <laughs> but it's definitely present here and so I wanted to really I think that's one of the main characteristics of, of his uh, that I found that I really wanted to to make sure I get correctly. Now notice how the mouth area is now I still haven't touched it and it's also an important area so I will make sure that I don't lose the edge too much there. You saw me just now spraying some water that's to to give the wash some more time. I actually learned this from Joseph Spukovic just if you need more time to spray some water on it it'll keep the wash still uh, wet. Um, uh, the sprayer that I'm using has very small drops uh, and you can see this by the very gentle texture that was created uh, and that's good because it evenly wets the existing wash a little more gives you a little more time to work uh, I find that sometimes with complex washes I have to use it uh, when I do landscapes outside it's a bit different because usually I find that I can get the first wash without too many problems unless there's something very unique about it uh, a lot of negative painting and stuff like that but usually I will be okay um, with just uh, the paint but with portraits because it's such a complex shape then, then you do need sometimes to re-wet the wash. So now around the lips that's an area where you know the the <laughs> artist curse where the painting doesn't look good that's in my experience the area that that makes you feel that the most because the lips for example now I painted around the mouth now the inside of the mouth is gonna be much much darker but right now it's white it's lighter than the, the lips which creates a very odd and awkward impression but you have to work through that uh, and find the, the, the right solution uh, for the moment okay and you have to postpone your your fear and disbelief that it's not gonna work you have to uh, power through that stage okay because r right now you see the exact opposite the area that's supposed to be the darkest and now I'm starting to fill it up is currently the lightest 
And uh, this is something you just have to learn how to live with. So now I put in some paint there, but not too dark because I will uh, have to leave some highlights for the teeth and stuff like that uh, that are gonna be about a similar value to what's in it now, okay? Uh, now all we're left with is this area to the uh, left of the lips, to our right, and the hair and some of the shirt. Uh, so this is uh, basically the easier stage, you know, the hair. Uh, and a lot of people wonder, how do I paint X, Y, Z? How do I paint a particular object? I'm never, I never think of it in terms of a particular object. I always think of just what I see. So if you look at the reference, I look at the values. Is it light? Is it dark? What's the shape? That's all I'm trying to get. Abstract shapes of light and dark and color. That's all I care about. And that solves your dilemma immediately with how to paint hair, how to paint dark uh, skin complexion, how to paint, you know, whatever it is. It's all about the values and the, the shapes. Um, shape in, shapes is another word for drawing. Uh, so now I get his hair in. Uh, it doesn't take too much of a prominent place in this painting. Um, and then I'll get his shirt. Now the shirt uh, and clothes, usually I try to get a bit of a contrast and interest with the, the person's face. Uh, and the way I do that is by, if I use a lot of soft transitions in the face, I'm gonna use a lot of dry brush for the clothes. So you can see here, I mostly painted it very softly. So now I'm gonna add uh, a bit of a harsher transition, a bit of a maybe some dry brush as you can see here. Uh, now I just want to mention the video is sped up uh, in uh, it's a hundred and fifty percent. Okay, that's how uh, fast it is. So it's it's not double speed. It's less than that. It's one and a half, um, which is still enough to 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 get the real time impression of it. I also wanted to mention I have been really enjoying the real time demonstrations and I know. Uh, a lot of people like them, so I'll, I'll definitely do more, okay, more on the way. I have a few really cool real-time demonstrations I do of pa I'll do of painting people. Uh, I do want to make another kind of spontaneous sketching with watercolor of people. A lot of people enjoy that, and as, I'm, as my approach develops, I think I have a lot more to share in that regard. Uh, so yeah, so now again, I'm just following the, the shapes and, and values that I see. There, are, there is a bit of a striped... Uh, pattern on his, uh, I believe he has a jacket and on top of that kind of a scarf, uh, which is what I'm painting right now, um, and, and trying to contrast it again with the face. Now if you look at the face you get a good impression of what I mean by establishing or constructing the, the shape, the general shape. If you take a few steps back or if you uh, squint your eyes you'll, you'll see the shape of his face. And then the second washes are responsible to really bring out the shapes of the objects because you're, you're putting in the shadows and, and so on. Uh, so now we're done with the first wash and now I'm, I, I'm following, I'm using a test paper sometimes to make sure that the value I'm using isn't too dark, isn't too light, uh, and starting to establish all of the shapes that I see in the face. Now my approach, generally speaking, is if I can connect a few shapes, I will connect them. And the reason why is that it is it does simplify the, the the object for the viewer uh, and s simplified uh, painting or drawing is much better you don't have to you know in our day-to-day -day lives you don't see everything you it's impossible to see everything you see a simplification of the world and I want to convey that same thing with my painting so I'm gonna try and hint at stuff and I'm gonna connect shapes as much as possible uh, because that helps the viewer to to have a good impression of what they see. So now you see I'm not scared to push the value, but funny enough I still have a lot of water in my paint, so some of that will need further darkening probably later on. Okay. Now notice how the highlights on the ear are dark, as dark as the shadows of the face, uh, as some of the sh more shadowy areas. Uh, so sometimes I'll just stick to one area and work on that, so now that'll be the neck and the ear and some of the hair. I still haven't moved into the main uh, areas that the eyes and the nose and the mouth and everything so sometimes I'll, I'll work from from the sides and inwards into the interesting parts uh, and sometimes I'll do what I'm doing right now and by the way now the video obviously is much more sped up that's about five times uh, the normal speed so I don't paint that fast don't worry <laughs> you don't have to paint that fast because it's humanly impossible um, and yeah, now the eyebrows. Usually, I'll start with the eyebrows or with a gentle shadow under them, because uh, above them, because usually that's where you'll find some shadows getting st uh, started in the face. Now his 
right eye that's to our left gave me hell as i mentioned earlier i'm putting in the the eyelid or all the different parts and it just doesn't work for me and then i have to constantly change and, and 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 modify the shape until i finally got it to look the way i wanted and hopefully by the end of this process it will look good and because sometimes when the shape is complex it's just hard to um to follow the the shapes and values that you see because again that's all i'm doing trying to treat it as a, an abstract shape so sometimes it is hard to follow all these shapes that you see it's a big challenge uh, with the nose usually i find that i can read the shape really well uh, with the eyes it's a bit of a different uh, case uh, what i do think i should be doing is practicing more um, with pencil so i'll just draw a portrait and then work on shading it really slowly uh, I think that or even try and isolate some, some shapes from the portrait and, and try to sketch them using pencil only and shade them. Uh, I think that'll be a really good uh, exercise to develop that ability to notice the intricate small shapes, which is a big, big challenge from time to time. Uh, so now I'm finally darkening some of the mouth a little more. Now you'll notice how I'm, I'll accentuate the, the shadows uh, that connect from the mouth to the cheeks, okay? Uh, and you'll get to see how slowly the shape is built, the very unique shape. You can already see it with his lips going downwards near the edges. Um, one more note I will say is I worked from a reference photo that wasn't as good because I literally, I got it in Joseph's book, which is D DVD. I literally paused the DVD at the scene where I could best see his face, took a screenshot and used that, okay? So... By the way, um, I'm I'm so worried about you know copyrights and stuff like that. I don't monetize videos that have uh, photos like the one I used here. So this video is not going to be monetized. Only things that 100% are my content I I monetize. Uh, so, so meaning I put ads on. Uh, so this video will not have ads on it. Um, so so yeah, it's just not as best of a reference photo as as I could want. Uh, it's a bit small. It's a bit grainy. Uh, the details aren't as clear as I'd want them to be uh, and that can really influence the result like here it, it really does make a difference if you can see all the small details and let me tell you the best way to paint is if the person is sitting down next to you and you can see everything that's like the best way to do it uh, when you do it like that um, it's of course granted it's challenging in different ways but basically uh, the, the seeing everything in front of you is so freeing and, and it's just easier after you get used to it. Uh, it does take a bit of getting used to, but I think it's an invaluable skill that uh, I would want to continue honing. Uh, I hear a lot of artists, uh, especially older, uh, more experienced artists say that today, not a lot of people still have the ability to properly draw from real life reference. Uh, it's like it's getting lost and that makes sense that's understandable because of technology and you have pictures and you can see everything you know in the past you didn't have photos you didn't have even the analog cameras you just had to paint what you see uh, but now because of technology you don't have to uh, so on the, uh, the the downside of that is that some of this ability uh, gets lost and uh, i do think it's important to uh, work on it and improve it um, so yeah, so now you saw me, by the way, I had the reference uh, in on my iPhone, the black and white version, so I'm, I'm using several references. Sometimes I'll open one on my computer, one on my iPhone, uh, but of course having the real person in front of me would have been better, and if I had Joseph Zbukovich in front of me, I'll probably ask him tons of questions <laughs> about watercolor. Uh, that could be an interesting conversation. Uh, by the way, Alvaro Castaneda did see the painting that I did of his, but Joseph Zbukovich didn't, as far as I know unfortunately uh, but in any case so alvaro was really nice he said that it was a, a nice uh, wow, how did he say it i don't remember but if you look at the post on instagram you'll see it uh, he did see the the painting i did so i'm very grateful for that um, and yeah now filling up just final shadows and touches i don't want to touch the face too much now because it does feel complete to me it does feel like uh, the result is overall good and it reads well um, so when i feel like it's done it's done even if all, not all of the details are there, again, I love to hint and not state. I like to suggest to the viewer what's there, but I don't want to say it abruptly. You know, I don't want to be too harsh with that. So now I'm signing it, and here is the final result. Uh, I hope you enjoy this one, and now we can wrap it up.
So this is it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing the uh, entire first wash properly. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how I approach putting in the different colors and getting the right values. And sometimes I'll try and mix things up and do things differently for myself. So I may uh, decide to cover up a full area that, that I just don't want to deal with. I'll just cover it up with a kind of medium value that I know isn't too, too dark, okay? Uh, and I'll make sure I'll avoid some highlights or stuff like that. And then I'll continue and, and go back to that at a later stage. That's something I'm, I will very often do. Uh, so this is it. Uh, if this is the first video of me you watch or if, if you still aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell button. Uh, and I told myself to remind you because that's the only way to get notifications and even that doesn't work all the time. So just know I'm posting three videos uh, a week. So you're going to have new content probably every time you get to visit uh, and hopefully the content improves. I'm really taking your feedback to heart. Um, aside from that, I'm going to link down below uh, the link to my beginner's drawing course. If you want to work on your drawing skills, be sure to check that out. Uh, New Year, it's time to really take responsibility of, of anything that you want to uh, take care of. I'm really focusing, for example, on uh, getting to that next level in watercolor painting. Like more than just good or great, I want to be like really, really good. Um, so that's a good time to start. I'm going to link down below also my podcast if you want to hear me talk about more uh, more talkative subject, I guess, uh, creativity and productivity and just my experience and kind of a, uh, an audio blog, if you will. Um, and this is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in another vid real soon.